In today's video, we're gonna go over five things you should know mixing on the MPC Live 2. One, leveling. Two, panning and stereo width. Three, side chaining. Four, routing. Five, effects. So before we get into leveling it, let's put our mix in mono. And the way you will put your mix in mono on the MPC Live 2 is you will go to the crown, you go to inserts, and then you will go to modulation, you will use an effect called stereo width. I really like this plugin a lot because it's simple and it does the job. You can mess with the width and you can mess with the frequency as well. Right now, I'm just gonna turn down the width. So you can also use the Q links. All you have to do is just hold down and go to screen. Screen is pretty much gonna read what screen you're on and then it's just gonna assign the knobs accordingly. Now before we play it, what I wanna do is actually loop a certain section. Right now I got the full beat just on this grid. Now the way you will loop certain sections is you can see the numbers at the top and you can use those numbers to guide you. So I already know the intro is around eight bars. So the next starting point would be on the nine. So I'll go to main and then I'll change my starting point to nine. So now let's hear it. Now before. So now let's go into the actual mix channel. I'm just going to solo the drums, go in, then click on my kick and then solo the kick. So now we could just double click on the meter, see where we're at. Now usually I like to have my kicks hit around like a negative 9 dB. When you're in a mixer, you don't want your sounds coming in hot because now when you go to the master output, is going to be clipping. It's okay to clip a sound in the sample, but not in the mixer. Because essentially, that's how you make your drums hit hard. You turn it up, you crank it up a lot, but then when you bring it to the mixer, you would turn it down, but you're just turning down the volume of that sample, which allows you to come in with that kick hitting hard, but have your master bus not clip. So now let's level everything else. So Q-Links is going to be a fast way to just adjust your levels. As long as you have it on screen, it will always like read what screen you want. And then you can just hit the Q link too. So you can even see the outline in yellow and it shows you which row you're in. And it all corresponds to it. So you go to the third knob. Now we can unsolo the kicks. And I wanna mute the sample and we're just gonna add in this bass line. Unmute the sample. Change the cue link. So now that we have the levels a bit balanced, what we can do is just go to main, go to our stereo width plugin on a master out, turn it off, and let's hear it in stereo. Yeah, so that's why it's good to like level in mono because everything is up the center. So you're gonna see what frequencies are clashing with one another. And when you level accordingly, you can fix a bit of that clashing. Go to pan and remember the Q link is on screen. So it's always gonna read the screen. I'm just gonna do a little panning to the hi-hats, but this hi-hat, let me mute this one so you can see what I mean. I'm just gonna actually not mute it, solo. Get used to solo. Solo is a lot faster. I'm gonna actually put the stereo width plugin on this one because that hi hat was in stereo. Let's hear it. Let's solo the drums. So you can hear it, it's in stereo. I can hear it primarily on my left side. And then we could bring it in. Now I can pan it the way I want to. As you can see, it's going by tens, right? What you can do is hold down shift and it will go into increments. Unsolo. I could even like pan the sample just slight. Even having it on like a small increment, it just gives room for your drums to like stick out a lot more. Now what we can get into right now is side chaining. Solo the kick and then go back to the mixer, put the sample on mute 
and just have the bass line and the kick play. Now, first thing we want to remember is that the bass is actually in stereo. And you can see I have effects on it from the previous video. If you haven't watched that, it's the first video to this, how the sample will be on MPC Live 2. But what I'm gonna do is actually erase all of these and start from scratch. So pretty much I cut out a lot of the highs in each of the sample chops and just made a bass line from that. So what we're gonna wanna do is first put it in mono. Now that we have it in mono, instead of using a filter, there's a plugin called Kill EQ. So if you click, there's a preset called Lows Only. Let's hear it. What I'm gonna do is just go a bit down because you can hear a bit of the sample. Turn down them highs. sound decent yeah if you just want to like sample the baseline in your sample then go with the kill EQ rather than the filter and then we could go to like a compressor if we want to mess with the dynamics a bit let's go to a bus compressor actually and just do like a light compressor so with it off it adds a bit of distortion but what I want to do is Bring down this wet knob, just kind of blend it a bit. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Now we can put our side chaining. You will go to dynamic and you will use a plugin called Mother Ducker. Now it has two Mother Duckers, but you're going to want to click on Mother Ducker and not the Mother Ducker input. Go to our kicks and go to dynamic and put the mother ducker input. You put the input on what you want to stick out the most and we want the kicks to stick out the most. It's best to use your ears, mess with the attack and the release. The threshold is pretty much how far down you want to go because if I scroll all the way to the left, you're not going to really hear that 808 no more. And you see how the scroll knob takes a while to go? We could just use the Q links. So I don't really have to like side chain with this mix because the kick is punchy. Always mix in context because if my kick was more so a low muffle kind of kick with an 808, then that's probably where you want to side chain. I just put it on there just so I can show you guys how you would go about side chaining, but it doesn't really need it. You can unsolo the kick, go back to the mixer, and take the sample off of mute. Now, I want to go back to the levels of the drums is turn up my kick a bit. Now as far as routing goes, I'm gonna show you my two common uses. Let's say like how you have the stereo width and everything filled up what you can do to like get more is double click on where it shows the output usually it don't really pop up that fast so if it doesn't pop up fast for you just go to the main and then click from here and then just double click like that you can send this to a sub mix and we go back to the mixer make sure you're on mixer and then you go over to your sub mix and now all the effects that was on that 808 is going into this channel. So now you have even more slots and I could put on anything else that I want to put on, anything else that I want to add, I could just put it on here. And I could even add other sounds into that one submix. So let's just say, let's just go to our program. Let's just say if my drums was not all on one program and it was on each individual tracks, I could just set each individual tracks to go to that one submix, which is essentially a bus channel, and then this affect all the drums. And another way I would go about routing is when it comes to effects now. So what we could do is go back up here, go to returns, and on the first return, I could just put on anything, a delay or a reverb. In this case, I'm just gonna put on a reverb, 
and click on the reverb. Make sure it's that 100% wet mix because this is a duplicate of your sound and you just want it to be wet versus your original signal still being dry because if you put it on top of your original signal, let's say you put the reverb on your program just on top of it, it's gonna compromise that signal for the reverb to come through. That's why we use sends. So what we could do is go to our program and then hit send. If you look closely underneath the send, it has four different slots. And because return has four different slots, so they correspond with each other. So let's just go to send. And remember, everything is always mapped out with the Q links, man. <laughs> so. Let's just hear it. Beaver. Put some reverb on the sample. We could even go into the drums. So I'm gonna just solo my drums. And then unsolo. Yeah. Now we can just look at our drums and just like probably just put a compressor on it. So minus that and I'll probably go with another bus compressor. Remember, for the sample chop, we didn't even EQ out the low end. So let's just hear our sample. You can hear that bass line. I'm gonna use that kill EQ again. So they turn up the highs, we can turn up the mids. Mess around with the highs. So on and off. So let's bring up our output again. Because we wanted to, because now essentially what we're doing is gain staging. So we want our output to sound at least similar to with the effects off. So with the effects off versus on. So that's good. Around negative two or three. And then I could put a uh, light compression on this. And one of my favorite compressors is the bus compressor. I feel like it just does a greater, better job. Basic compression on it. Yeah, basic compression is good. Now let's look at our main output real quick. See where we're coming. In. Right now we're clipping in a sense, but what we can do is just solo our drums. Make it hit around 9 dB or so. And I'll sample a bit. Now let's go back to our main and see where it's hitting now. So now it's hitting around negative three. And negative three is fine. Now if you want to see me master this beat, leave a comment below and I will make a video on that. If you like this video, like and share. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it. I have more MPC videos and you can also leave recommendations in the comments and I will look at them and start to make videos from there. Thank you.